Hello Grade 12s and welcome to today's lesson on Arithmetic Series. Shortly we will join Donovan who is teaching MacGyver about Arithmetic Series. They first look at how to identify and find the general term of an Arithmetic Series. And then they look at how to find the sum of a series. Let's actually join them now. Let's kick this lesson off with a short story to set the scene. Our tale is set in Germany. A school teacher has set his class a task. He asked his young learners to work out a sum with a very large number of terms. He wants them to add up the numbers 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and so on all the way to 100. The teacher thinks that a sum with so many numbers will take the children in his class a very long time to add up. So he sits down expecting his class to be quiet for a long time. No sooner has the teacher sat down than one of the young boys has come up to his table with an answer of 5,050. The teacher is astounded because the boy is correct. How could he possibly have worked out this answer so quickly? The youngster shows the teacher his method. He noticed that if he pairs the numbers 1 with 100, 2 with 99, 3 with 98, 4 with 97, 5 with 96, and so on, then each pair of numbers adds up to 101. The boy also saw that there would be 50 such pairs because there were 100 numbers which he grouped in pairs. Since the sum of each pair is 101, the sum of all the numbers must be 50 times 101, which is 5050. The boy in our story is called Karl Friedrich Gauss, a youngster who went on to become a famous mathematician. Wow, that was a smart kid. Whoever would have thought of that? Yes, that is pretty smart, isn't it? Not only does this tale inspire us all to work smart rather than hard, but it also introduces us to the topic of today's lesson, and that is arithmetic series. Let's go take a closer look at this type of series. The terms that differ from each other by a fixed amount which we call the common difference. We'll start by looking at the numbers that Karl Friedrich Gauss was adding. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. What is the pattern here? To get from 1 to 2, we add 1. And to get from 2 to 3, we add 1. And to get from 3 to 4, we add 1, and so on and so on. The one that we are adding is called the common difference. Now, I want you to look carefully at this next sequence of numbers I've written here. Can you determine what the common difference is and also what the next three terms would be? Okay, I'll give it a try. 8 is 3 more than 5, so the difference between these terms is 3. Then 11 is 3 more than 8, so the difference between these terms is also 3. If the difference between the next two terms is the same, then the next terms should be 11 plus 3, which is 14. And the next term is 14 plus 3, which is 17. And so on, to give us 20. Okay, that's great. You can stop there for now. How about this example here? Can you determine what the common difference is and also what the next three terms would be? Okay, let me try again. Hmm, this looks a bit strange to me. The numbers are getting smaller. From 15 to 11 to 7. We don't seem to be adding anything here. Who said anything about adding? I know that we added in the previous two examples, but look carefully at the definition again. The definition only talks about the difference. I guess I just assumed that I had to add every time. Let me look at it again and see if I can work out the difference. Okay, now I see. What we are doing is subtracting. We are subtracting 4 to get from 15 to 11. And again, we subtract 4 to get from 11 to 7. If we carry on in the same way, subtracting 4 from 7 would give me 3. Subtracting 4 from 3 gives me negative 1. 
and subtracting 4 from negative 1 gives me negative 5. Great job. Let's look at what we have found so far. For example 2, we found that the common difference is 3. And for example 3, the common difference is negative 4. I want you to try one more for me. Take a look at this example here. Can you determine what the common difference is and also what the next three terms would be? I think I'm getting the hang of this. Let me give it a go. The difference between 18 and 27 is 27 minus 18, which is 9. So I guess the common difference is 9. And the next term will be 37 plus 9, which is 46. And the next term will be... Hold on a second. You need to be careful. You should know from the work you have done with number patterns in the past that you have to check differences between more than two terms in the sequence. That's true. I forgot about that. I mean, it could be 18, 27, 36, or 18, 27, anything. I just assume it would be the same. And in math, you should never assume. Too true. Okay. So the difference between 27 and 37 is 37 minus 27, which is 10. Hey, shh. the difference is changing. But hold on, I still see a pattern here. The difference here is 9, and here is 10. So the next term, it should be 11, which would make the next term 48. That may be the case, but if you remember MacIver, we defined an arithmetic sequence as being a sequence in which the difference between consecutive terms is constant. And in this case, the difference is changing, so... So, this can't be an arithmetic sequence. This brings me to a very useful test. I call it the arithmetic sequence test. I say, if term 3 minus term 2 is equal to term 2 minus term 1, then the sequence is arithmetic. If term 3 minus term 2 is not equal to term 2 minus term 1, like in the example we just did, then the sequence is not arithmetic. Now that we have established what an arithmetic sequence is, I would like us to go back and have a look at the general term of the sequence again. If you remember, we said that the general rule of the sequence was a rule that generates the sequence. Firstly, I want to develop a general term for each of the sequences we've looked at so far, and then I would like to develop a general term for all sequences of this type. To help us in determining a rule for generating the sequences, I have numbered the terms in the sequences. I'm going to jump ahead a bit and write term 8 here. Magava, can you work out for me what term 8 will be? Sure, I'll give it a go. The first sequence is easy. Have a look here. Term 1 is 1, term 2 is 2, term 3 is 3, and so on, with term 6 being 6. So if you follow the pattern, term 8 should be 8. Great. What about the next sequence? This one's a bit harder. I can't see the pattern as easily as the first one. But to get from term 6, to term 8 would be like taking two steps. And since each step is 3 for this sequence, I guess that term 8 would be 20 plus 2 times 3, which is 26. Good. Keep going. For the next sequence, it seems to make sense that term 8 should be negative 5 plus 2 times negative 4, which gives me negative 13. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Be sure to try the task video at the end of this series where you can practice questions using the arithmetic series formula. You'll also be able to learn more about arithmetic series on our website. That's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.